My mom graduated college and got a job in the lab at Christ Hospital. She has been there for 41 years. My dad retired from banking this year, an industry he has been in for 40 years. My grandpa spent 34 years with General Motors. So when I started on the radio track here at Luce University, became the general manager of our radio station, got an internship at 97 Won the Drive and a job offer from them prior to graduating, I figured I would be in radio for the next 40 years. That's how this works, right? 11 years, eight jobs, and five industries later, I can firmly tell you no. That is not how this works, at least not for me. What nobody told me, what I had to find out on my own, is that work life is nonlinear, and that the employment experiences of my parents and my grandpa are not the norm anymore. They're the exception. I started my professional career at the age of 22 on my 22nd birthday. But before that, I had to realize that nonlinear means you're not going to have one job for your entire career. You're not going to move from point A to point B in a straight, predictable line. You're going to have peaks and valleys and some wild detours. Your career path will look much more like a squiggle than any classic definition of a straight line. So now selling advertising at 97 won the drive for my first job out of college. I was not technically using my broadcasting degree per se, but I was still working at a radio station, so that's got to count for something, right? The problem was I was a terrible sales rep. And after about a year, I realized I had to do something else. Compounding the problem was the fact that, unlike in college where you could do a little bit of everything at the station, in the real world, you had one job. And all those other jobs at the station were filled by people firmly entrenched in their positions. I was going to have to look outside of radio, which was pretty scary. I had been focused on radio for the last four and a half years, and suddenly my whole 40 years and one career idea was taking a hit. But what would I do? I thought about what I actually liked about my sales job. Making uh, 100 phone calls a day, not that. Coming up with a list of 100 places to call tomorrow, not that either. Pitching ad campaign ideas, ah, now that was something. Ideas, creativity, words, fun. I think they call this marketing. And that would make me mark in marketing. What if I combined my love of baseball with my like of this marketing thing and created a career for myself. I shall apply for baseball marketing jobs. This is when my pursuit of the fabled dream job began. What's your dream job? I'm sure many of you have one. You've also probably heard the phrase, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. That sounded pretty good to me. Not work for 40 years and still get paid? <laughs> Sign me up. My dream job, however, was baseball. I loved baseball. I wasn't any good playing it, but boy, could I watch it. I had even been to all 30 major league ballparks. So this dream job, easier said than done, 2011 Mark. I got a new job at an ad agency, but I kept applying for baseball positions. Seven teams in 2011, nothing. 34 teams in 2012, nothing. 200 teams in 2013, one offer. An unpaid internship in South Florida. Now, I never thought I would move across the country for a job, let alone one where I was not being paid in a place where I knew nobody. But work life is nonlinear. I had spent three years trying to get into baseball, and now I was finally making it happen. I spent a long, hot summer in Port Charlotte, Florida, 
where the temperature never dropped below 90 degrees, and I often found myself in the thick blue shag mascot suit the team used. You have never known hot until you've been in a mascot suit in Florida in July at noon. It wasn't all mascots, however. I did manage the social media and the website. I ran the scoreboard, helped plan theme nights, and helped put the tarp on the field whenever it rained, which was often. The only way I made any money was by bringing players to the airport for 50 bucks a pop. The hours were long, probably 70 to 80 a week, but I didn't care. I knew I was building my resume, and <laughs> I was working in baseball. Now, I knew it was a seasonal position, but I thought I would be so impressive as an intern that they would hire me on. This did not happen. September came, I moved back home, and started looking for the next job. Work life is nonlinear. That February, I was hired for a paid internship in Omaha, Nebraska, so I moved west for a season. There was no mascotting, but I did run the video board and direct the video broadcasts of their games. The interns there had an hour cap, 40 a week, with most of those hours coming at night during the games. So I got myself a day job in the produce section of a grocery store. I've got to admit, I did not see that one coming. As I stood over a table picking out rotten peaches, I wish I would have known that work life was nonlinear, but I hadn't figured that one out yet. Another September, another trip home, another job search. Then, in November 2015, it finally happened. I got hired for a full-time, salaried, with benefits, real-life job in baseball. This was an event four years in the making. All the resumes, the miles on the road, the rejections, the heat, the rain, the rotting peaches, the negative financial implications. Yo, Adrian, I did it! This was my rocky moment. I was joyous. The people who knew me were ecstatic. I had become the person they could talk about, the one who chased his dream and caught it. Mark Serratori worked in baseball and would for the next 35 years. Remember that phrase we talked about earlier, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life? Yeah. It's preposterous. Don't listen to it. Long hours and difficult tasks were constant reminders that even dream jobs are hard work. And yes, I understand the sentiment behind it, that if you do what you enjoy, you will always enjoy it. That too is bunk. People get desensitized very quickly. Every game with my new team in York, Pennsylvania, saw me standing on the field, the sacred holy ground of baseball, and coordinating pregame events like the national anthem and first pitches. These individuals would step out onto the field and be in awe, taking pictures and drinking in their surroundings. For me, it was just Tuesday. If you're going to chase a job just because you think it's going to be fun all the time, you're likely in for a rude awakening. And speaking of rude awakenings, things were starting to unravel. I had my dream job, sure, but my personal life was stuck in neutral. I saw my friends getting married, having kids, and buying houses. Meanwhile, I had boxed up my life five times and moved across the country in under two years. I could barely afford name brand food, and the long hours were burning me out. This was no way to live. But by leaving baseball, by admitting defeat, I would be leaving everything I had been driving for, for more than four years. How embarrassing would it be to have to go back home, tail between my legs, and admit to all those people who had been so happy for me six months ago that I had been wrong, that baseball was not the dream that I thought it was, that I could no longer be the guy who was literally living the dream, that despite graduating in college in 2010, I was still hopelessly lost five and a half years later. 
what no one had yet told me, what I still had to figure out for myself, was that work life is nonlinear, and that what I was going through was okay. In fact, it was normal. Nobody told me that at age 27, I still had plenty of time to find a career path that was right for me. For the second time in my professional career, I had to face the task of pivoting away from an industry that had been my focus for years. Over the course of the next nine months, I would submit 105 job applications for marketing positions in various places and in various industries. Hotels, restaurants, airports and zoos, in Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Ohio. The entire Midwest was open for business as far as I was concerned. To help aid in my efforts, my brother put me in touch with his career counselor at the University of Oregon, who told me that governments have marketing departments. So I added government entities to my list of targets. I moved back home and got a job in the produce department. So, rotting peaches, we meet again. When all was said and done, I had five job interviews, three of which were for government organizations. My one job offer was for a place four miles from where I graduated. It took moving to Florida, Nebraska, and Pennsylvania to end up back here in the village of Romeoville and discovering a career that I am still in today. <laughs> Work life is nonlinear. I have found my place. I have found my industry. Now, I hesitate to say that I will be in local government for the next 30 years because, as we know, work life is nonlinear. But I like my chances. While those seven years of radio, ad agency, baseball, and produce were turbulent, they taught me a lot about learning new skills, about working in different office environments, about living in new places, and about myself. I don't think I would be nearly as successful in my current position if it weren't for all of those prior experiences. Thinking back to my radio days, Billy Joel's song, Vienna, has a pretty relevant line. Slow down, you're doing fine. You can't be everything you want to be before your time. So I encourage you to learn all you can in your current job or in school. You never know what you'll actually use and what you won't. Sometimes it is the seemingly most irrelevant things, like being a mascot, that end up circling back around again. This past December, I spent seven nights running around town dressed as the Grinch for one of the village's holiday programs. And I have to tell you, as soon as I stepped into that suit, it was like riding a bike. I am so glad that I worked in baseball. For the skills and the self-discovery and the learning, yeah, all that. But also for the stories and the memories and the fact that I don't have a giant what if hanging above my head. What if I would have taken that internship in Florida? Where would I be today? I did it. I scratched the itch. I chased the dream. And I encourage you to do the same thing and eliminate that what if from your life. And remember, if it doesn't work out, it is perfectly OK to walk away. My fears of leaving were totally unfounded. No one was ashamed of me for not working in baseball anymore. If anything, they were in awe of the time that I did spend there. And looking back at all my coworkers on those various teams, a majority of them don't work in sports anymore either. I was not the only one to walk away. So if you walk away, people will still respect you, maybe even more so. Because for most people, you have already done what they could not and maybe would not. The documentary, The History of the Eagles, has a pretty incredible quote from guitarist Joe Walsh. And if you know anything about Joe Walsh, that in and of itself is quite amazing. He says, as you live your life, it appears to be anarchy. 
and chaos, and random non-related events smashing into one another, creating this situation or that situation. And it's overwhelming. And it looks like, what in the world is going on? But later, when you look back at it, it looks like a finely crafted novel. Mr. Walsh and his philosopher friend are right. When I look back on my journey, I realize there is no other way it could have gone. It makes sense, especially if you know that work life is nonlinear.